Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. In this video I'm going to kick off the next project. Also have some ideas for other things you might be interested in. A bunch of different amplifiers I might take a look at. If you think you might be interested in this let me know in the comment section. And I might consider doing a series on the amplifier. One thing I'd like to say you know, since I've been through the design process of the other amplifier, all these new videos, uh, I should say all the new project videos, are not going to be real long, strung out series of videos. I'll do it within, uh, you know, two or three videos. So don't expect these to take a year to complete. This is something I would like to get done in just a short few videos. Ah, uh, you're just staring at a pile of stuff on the bench I've been playing with. Had to put something there. You know, something to look at in the video here as I run my mouth. Okay, so let's move on to the list of projects here before I get to the main kickoff. First is the John Audio Tech Easy Amp, and that's the amp I'm going to kick off. And I won't say anything more about that until I get through this list. Next is a Class A push-pull headphone amplifier. I've had some people mention that they'd be interested in a headphone amplifier, so how does that sound? The next amplifier I'm looking at is Rod Elliott's of Elliott Sound Products P3A amplifier. It's a popular amp. You have to supply the components, but he supplies boards. But I want to look at the amp and you know just play with it, see what it's all about maybe uh, make improvements to it but his idea was to keep it simple class A boards let's see here I got these boards I haven't forgotten about them I had a viewer send these boards in I have to get a bill of materials but uh, these are class A power amplifier boards and it'd be neat to build at least one of them up and See what those are all about. So I still have those to look at. I might look at some preamps, solid state, or even tubes. Why tubes? Well, why not tubes? Another amplifier is called the Plastic Tiger Amp from the early 70s. There's a guy named Dan Meyer. He used to write electronics project articles for electronics magazines back in the 60s and 70s. He did a bunch of different types of projects, including audio amplifiers. And he always had a name for them. They were like called the Tiger something or something Tiger. Like Universal Tiger, the Plastic Tiger. They called it the Plastic Tiger because they used the uh, plastic epoxy encapsulated transistors in this particular amplifier so that's where they got that name from so at some point this guy decided well I'm gonna market these kits so he started a company called Southwest Technical Products and um, marketed a lot of these projects you could buy the boards and the components and everything eventually when the home computer kicked off he got into that and started making computer kits but yeah, I want to take a look at that early amplifier, build it out, see what it's like, um, see what issues there are with it. Next is an LM1875 amp. I had a viewer send me these boards in, just blank boards, and I populated them with my own components. I apologize for not remembering who it was. Was it Matt who sent those in? But these are nice boards, so I want to make an LM1875 amp out of that. So I have the boards soldered up. I just need to put them in a case and uh, come up with the power supply and all that good stuff. So yeah, that's a project that's been sitting around. Those, like I said, I soldered those up about a year ago, and they've just been sitting in the drawer here. So I'm going make an amp out of them. Uh, a couple people mentioned guitar amps. Well... I'm not a guitar player, so I don't really know what they would want. Oh, looky here. Look who jumped up. The Snickers came in. 
You want some tubes? You got some tubes. You gonna jump on my lap? I think he wants to lay on my lap. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, Snickers. It's the Snickers. Okay. Yeah, so I'd have to have a guitar to actually make one to, uh, you know, try it out. I would never say never, but I don't know. It's not really in the cards right now. Okay, so let's kick off the next amplifier project. I'm calling this the John Audio Tech Universal Easy Amp. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep the name Universal in there, but at least it'll be called the John Audio Tech Easy Amp. So what is this amp all about? Well, I want it to be rated around 35 watts into 8 ohms. So it's going to be a little bit less than the current amplifier project I'm working on. The idea with this amp is to keep it simple and uh, you know cut down on the parts that I used in the other amp. Use uh, less expensive parts as well. 50 watts into 4 ohm loads, it will be 4 ohm compatible. I'm not going for the super high audio file numbers of distortion. It'd be nice if I can reach these numbers. Uh, 0.01 total harmonic, total harmonic distortion at 1 kilohertz and uh, 0.1 or less than 0.1 at 20 kilohertz. Eh, something like that. I don't know yet what my current project amplifier is going to hit. Hopefully it's a lot better than this. But this amp, you know, I'm not going for those numbers. I want decent performance, but I'm, like I say, I don't want the super low numbers that require a lot of extra parts. Uh, here's why I say the uh, simplified design, less parts, lower cost. Uh, it's calling it universal, so you can power it with different voltages up to a certain amount. It'd probably run at around plus or minus 28 volt rails or maybe 30 volt rails. Uh, I don't know yet. I'm going to do some calculations. But if you wanted, you can run it down at much lower voltage, like maybe a couple 12 volt batteries if you want to make it portable. Of course, you'll get less power with less voltage. Uh, single supply option. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. I uh, already mentioned battery power. So there you have it. This is what it's all about, this amplifier here. One thing to keep the price low, I'm going to use Darlington transistors, these monolithic Darlington transistors in the output, like the BDX33 or 34 complementary pair. I also have these uh, BDW 42 and 47 G's. Uh, th these have pretty nice ratings. They, they're 15 amp, 100 volt transistors. The RTO220, they say that the uh, max dissipation is 85 watts. Eh, maybe if you mount the transistor directly on the heat sink without an isolator and Put the heat sink in ice water, you get that, but yeah, I don't know if that's a really good power rating for these things. Uh, a lot of amp designers don't like these monolithic Darlington transistors, but they have been used in consumer amplifiers and receivers before, so I just want to try them out, see what it's all about. You know, one of these transistors is around 90 cents and it eliminates the need for a driver transistor and a couple of resistors. So yeah, interested in how this works. Now, because I'm using these TO220 case transistors, the amplifier can't be real powerful, so yeah, that's why I'm, I want the thing to be uh, 35 watts into 8 ohms, uh, somewhere around there, and maybe up to 50 watts, 4 ohms. So there you have it, the 
Jat Easy Amp. I want to get the other amplifier wrapped up before I start on this one. I've already modeled this in LT Spice, so, you know, it's just work on it already. And if there's enough interest in it, I might consider having boards made for it, just like the other amp. And it'll be pretty simple. You can even use perf board and lay it out on perf board and make an amplifier that way. So that'll do it. Thanks for watching. All right, Snickers? <laughs> there we go.